Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue solving problems on combinatorics. This is the sixth series of problems in the first part, so I will have another part. Um, anyway, combinatorics are great uh, problems actually, and uh, uh, I, I do suggest you to first go to unizor.com and uh, um, have these problems. Um, well, try at least to solve these problems just by yourself. Very important. And then you can just, you know, listen to this lecture. Now, the notes for this lecture contain, obviously, the problems, and then they follow with um, an answer, which you can check against yours, and then there is an explanation of the logic, which basically I'm doing exactly the same thing here. So, again, the main source is um, the problems and the main activity is to try to solve these problems yourself. All right, now, after that is done, so let's go to the problems of this particular lecture. One is, okay, I have a number, 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of 4 times 5 to the power of 5. This is my number. I would like to know how many divisors or factors um, does it have? Well, let's include number one and and the whole number as as divisors, just for simplicity purpose. Okay. Um, well, I did solve a somewhat similar problem um, before in one of the previous lectures, but in that program, in that problem, um, all the um, multipliers were prime numbers and then the problem was kind of a relatively simply solved. This is not the case and that's exactly my, my my first most important point right now here is before doing anything like counting how many different um, divisors the, uh, the particular number has we have to represent it uh, a, as a product of prime numbers well, uh, raised to certain powers, obviously. Now, in this case, 2 and 3 and 5 are prime, 4 is not. So, I have to convert it to prime, which means I have to convert 4 into prime numbers. Now, 4 is 2 by 2, and 4 to the 4th degree is 2 to the 8th degree, right? This is 2 squared and to the fourth, we multiply the exponent, so it's 2 to the 8th degree. Which means that my number n is equal to 2. I have second power, and I have the 8th power, right? So all together uh, are 10. And this is a representation as a product of prime numbers in certain powers. Now, this is now easier. Now, if we would like to count how many different divisors this particular number has, well, let's just consider. Every divisor has to have certain number of 2's from 0 to 10, certain number of 3's from 0 to 3, and certain number of 5's from 0 to 5. Because these are prime numbers, there are no other combinations. If my divisor has anything but 2, 3, and 5, or it has 2 or 3 or 5 in the, in the power greater than 10 or 3 or, or, or 5 correspondingly, then it cannot be a divisor. So, all I have to do is to choose certain number of 2's, certain number of 3's, certain number of 5's, multiply them, and that's a divisor, as long as the numbers do not exceed the powers. So, how many choices do I have? Well, I have 11 choices for uh, number 2 to choose from 2 to the power of 0 to 2 to the power of 10, right? So I have 11 choices for my first um, component. Then I have from 0 to 3, it's 4 choices for certain number of 3's in my divisor, and then the 6 choices of 5. So any uh, power which I can choose from 2 for, th for 2, for 3, and for 5 then I combine them together, raised in these powers, that's a divisor, right? And this is 264. 
So that's the answer. That's how many divisors this particular uh, number has. Okay, this is easy. And again, just let me repeat. All I have to do is first represent as a product of prime numbers in certain powers, and then everything seems to be very simple. And uh, for the prime numbers, I have already basically solved this problem in its general format. So if n is represented as p1 in the power of n1, p2, power n2, etc., p n, well, let's use some other letter pk, let's say, power nk, then if p1, p2, and pk are, are, are prime numbers, and again, I'm referring you to the, to, to the problem which I have already solved in one of the previous lectures, I have from 0 to n minus 1, which is n1 plus 1 choices for the first, n2 plus 1 for the second, etc., and k plus 1 for the last prime number, and that's the product of these is actually the number of uh, different divisors because that's uh, uh, my prime numbers in any power can participate in any divisor. All right, so that's easy. Now let's go into a little bit more complex problem. And I have actually two problems here, one a particular one and one general. So let me start from one specific particular problem um, because it's easier to explain. So I have exactly the same number, 2 to the 10, 3 to the 3rd, and 5 to the 5th. Now, I'm interested in uh, summarizing all these 264 divisors. What's their sum? Well, that's a little bit more difficult and a little bit more involved problem. Now, before actually explaining um, anything about this particular problem, let me just make a very short excursion back to the um, uh, geometric progression. Now, if you have a geometric progression, which means you have a first member, and then every other member is uh, the previous times certain factor, Q is a factor. And let's say the very last one is q to the nth degree. And what if I want to summarize them? This is called sum of geometric progression. I don't know about you. I never remember the formula. However, I do remember how to derive it. Very simply, actually. Let's multiply s by q. What will I have? a times q would be a q a times a q would be a q square. Now, the previous one to this would be a times q to the n minus first, and times q would be a q to the nth, and if I will multiply q by this, I will have a q n plus first. Right? So if I will subtract from this, I subtract this, I will have s times q minus 1 equals now, these are all cancel out, and I have only the last one and the first one. a q to the n plus 1 minus a, from which follows this formula. Oh, sorry, minus, yeah, minus a, right, minus 1 divided by q minus 1, okay? So the formula obviously is true for this factor not being equal to 1. Everything else works fine. But for equals to 1, it's actually a, 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 a. So the, the, the sum is equal to a times n plus 1. So it's a separate case. It's not interesting. We are not considering it. Anyway, this is the formula which I have just derived. And I will be using this formula. So if I have certain geometric progression with certain number as the first member, certain factor, and certain maximum exponent uh, of the factor participating in the sum, this is the formula. So it's basically a function of three parameters. The first member, the factor, and the maximum. Okay? 
All right, so let me just write it somewhere up there so I don't forget it anymore and, and, and they don't have to derive it anymore. So S of A, Q, N equals A, Q, N plus first minus one divided by Q minus one. Okay, done. Now let's think about this particular problem. So again, I would like to know what's the sum of all these 264, as I calculated in the previous problem, um, divisors of this number. I suggest a, a geometric interpretation. Here is my three-dimensional space. Now, three-dimensional because I have three prime numbers, by the way. In a general form, I will have more and I will have more dimensions. But let's consider three because it's easier, right? So, what I will do is the following. I will put numbers here from 0 to 10. So this is 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 and 10. And they will represent the power of 2, which I'm going to use. So the whole x-axis would be my number of 2's in the divisor. Now, y-axis would be the number of 3's, and I have 0, 1, 2, 3. And uh, the z-axis would be um, the number of uh, number 5, which participates in the divisor. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, let's take any... Uh, let, well, we, we will build actually some kind of parallelepiped. something like this, whatever. So this is a parallelepiped. Every point inside of that parallelepiped with integer coordinates, I'm talking only about points which have integer coordinates, so they have projection, let's say, this is projection on the x-axis, this is projection on the y-axis, and this is projection on the uh, z-axis, all right? So the point is somewhere here. All right. Now, what does it mean? It means that the coordinates are what five, uh, one, and two. It means I take five twos, one three, and two fives, and this is of the, uh, one of the divisors, right? So. My point is that every point inside of this parallelepiped with integer coordinates, of course, corresponds to some divisor. And the number of points, by the way, equals to the number of divisors, right? So this is kind of a geometric interpretation of all my divisors. They're all inside this parallelepiped with sides 10, 3, and 5. 10, 3, and 5 from 0 to 10, from 0 to 3, and from 0 to 5. And again, I'm talking only about integer coordinates, okay? Now, so I have numbers inside this parallelepiped. So this point is associated with this number. Another point is associated with another number. Any point is associated with some kind of divisor, right? Now I have to summarize them. The way how I, I, I will summarize them will be the following. First, I will summarize all the divisors which are lying on this x line. Then I will try to expand it on the plane, so I will add these rows as well. And when I have the plane, I will try to rise it and fill up completely um, the parallelepiped. This is my geometric approach, right? 
Okay, fine. So, let's think about what I have if I will just summarize all the points with integer coordinates along the x-axis, which means they have zero threes and zero fives. So it's only twos which are participating. Two to the zero, two to the first, etc., etc., up to two to the tens. So what do I have? Well, this is geometric progression, right? The first member is equal to one, right? Two to the f to, to, to the power of zero. Um, the factor is equal to two, right? I'm multiplying by two every time, and the last power, the maximum, is ten. Let's use this formula. It gives me the sum along this axis, sum of all 11 divisors which have only 2 in their prime composition, not 3's and no 5's. Now, what do I have? Well, a is equal to 1, so I multiply by 1, that's okay. So it's 2, 2 to the power of 11 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. Okay, that's my first. Great. So, this is sum of all these elements. Now, let's move along the y-axis. What will be the difference between these numbers and the next row from here, which have the y-coordinate equal to 1? Well, it would be 2 to the 0 times 3 to the 1 plus 2 to the 1st times 3 to the 1. So all of them, all of, the, all of these divisors have 3 to the 1st degree, right? And the last one would be this, which is actually sum of all the previous times 3 to the 1st degree, right? So all these numbers are greater than all these numbers by a factor of 3. So the whole sum of these numbers will be 3 times greater than sum of these. So again, from points in the beginning, now I'm switching to lines now. This line has already been summarized and that's its sum. And now I'm considering the next line in the increasing y coordinate. And this line would be exactly 3 times greater uh, in, in, in the summation uh, than the previous line. So, in terms of lines, I can consider this sum as a beginning, the first member of the geometric progression, and then the next sum would be three times greater, the next sum would be again three times greater, etc., etc., up to the last one. So, what I have here is I have a new geometric progression with A, the first member, being my sum, whatever I have received here, which is 2 to the 11 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. Q now would be equal to 3, because every new line, new horizontal in this case line, would be 3 times greater than the previous. And the maximum is 3, the maximum power I'm raising this. Go to this line, go to my formula, and what do I have? Well, I have my previous one, which is this one, A, times uh, 3 to the power of 4, right? And, and, and is equal to 3 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1, q minus 1. That's the result of my summation of all the different divisors which lie on the xy plane. They don't have any f 5 in their, uh, in their prime representation. Fine, great, done. So now we have found, the so first step was summarize along the line, second summarize along the plane, xy plane, and the third one, obviously, I will summarize uh, in the third dimension. Let's add 5. Now, let's consider any 
divisor which lies on the xy plane. It has number of fives in its representation equal to zero, right? What if I will switch to the next plane, this one, where the coordinate of z, co z coordinate is equal to one? It means I'm adding five into the representation. So every member of this plane, which is on x, y, with uh, z coordinate equal to zero, uh, and then but if I switch it uh, to the next one, if I raise it to the first uh, coordinate on the z, uh, axis, it will be five times greater because it means that every member, since every member on this plane with z coordinates equal to one, has five in the first degree, right? So the sum of these, comparing to sum of the next plane one one higher, what would be their uh, difference? Well, the plane which is one higher would be five times greater if you summarize all the uh, all the members of this plane will be five times greater than the sum of uh, of the basic uh, 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 XYZ, uh, XY plane, right? Since every divisor would be multiplied by five. What would be the next? If I will raise again this plane to the level of Z coordinate is equal to two. Well, again, that means that I have five to the second degree, right? Power of two, which means I'm again multiplying every divisor by 2, and the sum would be also uh, multiplied by, 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 by 5. And uh, the sum would be multiplied, multiplied by 5 again, right? So every time I'm raising this plane higher and higher, sum of uh, the um, elements on that plane would be 5 times greater than the previous one. So I have again a geometric progression of these sums. The first member being this one, right? So this is my first member. Now, the factor from plane to plane, I'm multiplying by 5, right? And the maximum is 5. So what will I get now? I have to multiply a right which is this times what uh, q to the n plus first 5 to 6 minus 1 and divided by 5 minus 1 so that's the answer I mean obviously you can Simplify 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, and this is uh, 4. So obviously it's, it, it's simplifiable in some way. But this is the answer. So that's the total sum of all the divisors. Good. Now, if you understand that, let me go to the next problem, which is a generalized version of the same problem. Now, I was kind of lucky that in this particular case I had only three prime numbers and I have used the three-dimensional space and made the picture for you. If I have, in my next problem, I have not three but certain number of prime numbers, so I have k prime numbers and every one of these prime numbers is uh, raised into certain power and now the question is again absolutely the same what's the sum of all its divisors so well instead of using this picture I will just use plain coordinates right so first I will uh, consider um, ordered sequences of coordinates again in n dimension in k dimensional space so my coordinates will be the string with coordinates um, let's say um, which letter should I use 
let's say i1, i2, ik. Now, this string of integer i1, i2, etc., ik represents actually in k dimensional space uh, my one particular divisor, namely this one. And obviously, each a j should be no greater than n j and zero and integer, right? So these are all the different divisors which uh, this particular number n has. So when i1, i2, etc., ik are going among all these different numbers, all the, uh, all the different combinations, and obviously we know that the number of combinations for j1, for instance, for i1 is n1 plus 1, from 0 to n1, n for i2 would be from 0 to n2, etc., etc., so the total number of divisors would be n1 plus 1 times n2 plus 1 times n3 plus 1, etc. But now we are interested in their sum, not in their quantity. So, I will consider these sequences of k integer numbers conditioned uh, th th this way as representing these divisors, right? Now, let me first summarize all the different divisors which are represented with something 0, 0, 0. So the first coordinate is changing from 1 to n, n1, from, from 0, uh, sorry, from 0 to n1. So for all these divisors, which are basically described by uh, these particular strings, so 0, 0, 0, 0 means uh, my divisor p1 to the 0, p2 to the 0, etc., pk to the 0, which is equal to 1, by the way. Now, um, the first coordinate equals to 1 means p1 to the first and these are still <coughs> in the zero in the power of zero <coughs> excuse me now if I want to summarize them what are the results of the summation well the first number with zero uh, is equal to 1 right because every power is equal to zero the second number would be equal to p1 because p1 would be in the first power and the rest are 0, which is 1. Next one would be p1 square, etc. And the last one would be p1 to the n1. So that's the sum of these. I put the sigma sign here. So sum of all these if you wish, I can actually do it a little bit more scientifically. I can put i1 here, where i1 from 0 to n1. Right? So these are my uh, all the divisors, which are along the first coordinate. And again, according to this formula, I will have... What will I have? The first with 1, so it's p1 to the n 1 plus 1, right? That's the maximum. Minus 1 divided by P1 minus 1. That's the sum. Now, I will add to this, I will add to this another summation. and I2 would be here. Now, how can I summarize this? Well, again, for I1, which is equal to 0, um, uh, sorry, for I2 is equal to 0, I have already summarized. Now, what's the difference between the sum for I2 equals to 0 and when i2 is equal to 1. Well, the sum um, would be exactly p2 times greater, right? Because 
every member, like for instance, this one, if I multiply it by P2, it gives me this member, right, from 0 to 1, because this divisor contains only P1 in the degree in the power of I1, right? And this divisor contains the same P1 uh, in the power I1 and P2 to the first power. So this one would be smaller than this one, or this one would be greater than this one by a factor of P2. Now, next would be, if I multiply this by P square, P2 square, I will get this one. So if I want to, multi to, to summarize them all, I will have to basically take this as my first member of the geometric progression, P2 as a factor, and the maximum, which is N2, which is N2, uh, would be my maximum uh, power, uh, maximum exponent, which I'm using, right? So whenever I would like to extend my summation from just the P1 to P1 and P2 divisors, I have to multiply it by correspondingly P2 to the power N2 plus 1 minus 1 and divide by P2 minus 1. So I'm basically explaining exactly the same thing as I was explaining in the case of a three-dimensional. And obviously the formula would be as you understand, more or less the same. But I would like to prove this formula a little bit more rigorously. How can I do it? Well, the best way is actually by induction. So let's consider that I have already guessed the formula based on all these considerations. And the formula is this one. P, K, n k plus 1 minus 1 divided by p k minus 1. So this is the formula which I have kind of guessed. How can I prove it by induction? Well, let's do induction by k, by number of prime numbers which um, are, are represented uh, in this particular number n. So what if I have um, more numbers. I have k plus 1 numbers. Well, first of all, obviously, we should check it for k is equal to 1. So, if I have only, if I have only one particular prime number in the uh, distribution of this particular, uh, in, the pre in the representation of this particular number, then divisors are 1, p1, p1 square, etc., p k, uh, p1 to the n1, right? So these are uh, all the divisors, and obviously their sum is equal to p1 to the n1 plus 1, according to this formula, minus 1 divided by p1 minus 1, which corresponds to this formula, with k is equal to 1, right? So that, that's obvious. Now, let's consider that the formula is correct for k prime numbers. And let's add the k plus first number in the representation. So now my representation is this one. Now all the divisors of this number are all the divisors of the old number, which means all the different combinations of these prime numbers and all the combinations of these prime numbers multiplied by pk plus first and all combinations of these multiplied by pk plus first square, right? And the cube, etc., etc., up to and k plus first, right? So we are adding more divisors. Now, what would be the sum of these divisors? Well, if I have all the divisors separated in groups, these are only uh, p from 1 to k. 
these are p from 1 to k times pk plus 1. This is not a minus, this is from 2. Now this is from 1 to k, all the different combinations and all the different powers times pk plus 1 squared, right? So I have divided all my divisors of this number into these groups. This group contains only uh, prime numbers from 1 to k. This is contains only prime numbers from 1 to k multiplied by pk plus first to the first power and then to the second, etc. What's the difference between these sums? If I will summarize all of these, all of these, all of these. Well, if I will summarize them, it's actually sum of these guys and this is the sum of these guys multiplied by, let's quote S. This is S multiplied by PK plus 1. This is S multiplied by PK plus 1 square, square, etc. Right? So again, it's a geometric progression. So I'm basically using exactly the same logic. And I can definitely use exactly the same formula. So my uh, sum of these would be equal to whatever was before here of this, and I have this formula, right? This is my A, right? My Q would be equal to PK plus 1, and my N would be equal to uh, NK. So I have to multiply, according to this formula, I have to multiply the first member, which is this, which is this, times the Q, which is, which is this, to the power of maximum, which is n k, uh, sorry, that would be k plus 1, right, the maximum, k plus 1 minus 1, and divided by p k plus 1 minus 1, right, the q. And this is exactly the same formula with k plus 1 rather than k prime number. So basically the induction is working here. And logic is exactly the same, even without this visual representation. I thought visual representation as a parallel pipette in case of three dimensions would be, you know, kind of nice. Okay, and uh, the last problem is a very simple one, and I will not spend a lot of time on this. So let's consider you have a circle and you have n points on this circle. Now, question is, how many different polygons um, we can draw if we connect all these n points in some order? So the polygons are not necessarily convex. So not necessarily I have this one. I can also have this, 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 and this. This is also a polygon. Right? And this is also a polygon. So I can con connect this, 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 and this. So how many different polygons I have? Well, obvious is, the first consideration is, well, the order I'm going from one point to another basically determines my polygon. So number of n points I can place in different order by n factorial different ways, right? Well, that's not the end of it, obviously, because you see, if this is, let's say, I start from 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, right. So if I will do it in this sequence, from this to this, from this to this, to then to this, and, the, the, and, and then I end, end the story from 4 to 1. This is exactly the same polygon uh, as if I, for instance, start from this, then go to here, then to here, and then to here. Right? This, this, and this, and this. Which means that there are certain repetitions, the same polygons, even if the sequence is different. 
So what's the difference, what, what kind of different sequences produce exactly the same polygon? Well, obviously it's the cyclical uh, permutations. So if you have a cyclic representation, all of them gives exactly the same polygon, right? From first point to second, and then to third to fourth, or, and then back to the first, that to, to complete the polygon, or from the number two point to number three to number four, and then to number one. It's exactly the same sequence of, li of lines, basically, the same, the same segments which make the polygon. So I can actually make this uh, cyclical uh, permutation without changing the polygon itself. So now the question is, how many, for any particular permutation, how many cyclical permutation it, it, it has? Because all of them are supposed to be glued together into one polygon. Well, the answer is, well, if you have four, for instance, members, well, obviously you can start from any one of those, from the first or from the second or, or from the third or from the fourth, right? So does it mean that it's four different cyclical permutation? Well, not exactly, because you can actually go to the opposite direction. You can start from the first, and then go to the fourth, and then third, and then second, and then close to one. This is also exactly the same. So you have two different directions. Four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, and two, one, uh, four, three something like this, right? So, I have actually eight in this case. So, for n points, I can have it moved cyclically one way, let's say clockwise, for instance, or whatever you call it, um, to, to do the cyclical per, uh, permutation. Or I can do it counterclockwise, and it will be exactly the same polygon. So, I have two n different cyclical permutation, and the answer is I have to divide it by two n. Or, if you wish, it's n minus 1 factorial divided by 2, because n factorial means from 1 to n, n would be cancelling, and uh, from 1 to n minus 1 would be remaining, and 2 is still there. So that's the answer. That's so many polygons I, I, I can draw. Uh, all right, that's it for today. Uh, I do recommend you to go to unizor.com and review these problems again. Uh, try to solve it again just by yourself and then whatever the solution is provided. Um, basically, that's it. Uh, if you, by the way, if you will uh, register to the site, then you can just, you know, take the course, you can take exams, etc., etc. Everything is free and I definitely will welcome you to do this type of things. All right, thanks very much and good luck.